welcome to Eskimo TV. We're talking today to Rob Watt. Rob is an independent addiction psychotherapist specializing in sex addiction. Most recently, he managed the addiction treatment program at the Priory Hospital of Roehampton and is currently trustee on the board of ATSAP, which is the Association for the Treatment of Sex Addiction and Compulsivity. Hi, Rob. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you, Joanne. Good to be here. Wonderful. Rob, let's talk today a little bit about addictions, but specifically today about alcohol. What makes drinking alcohol addictive? Joanne, there's two elements to that. There's a, there's a psychological element where it, uh, it can act as a, as a crutch for anxiety and stress. And then there's also a physical element where when you, when you, when you drink alcohol, it releases endo- a, a dopamine, which is linked to the reward system in the brain. And uh, it also causes the brain to release endorphins, which, which is, it's a painkiller. So that's why you can get addicted to that, and, and, and that's when you get cravings. Uh, so that, those are the two elements of, of What are addiction. some of the physical and psychological dangers of alcohol addiction? Okay, well, physically, um, you know, there's, there's the obvious liver uh, damage, uh, it can cause stomach ulcers, strokes, uh, gastritis, blood pressure, um, uh, general, uh, there's what's called, uh, in terms of the psychological elements, there's depression, there's a long word coming up, there's, there's uh, Korsakoff's encephalopathy, which is what most people know as, as wet brain syndrome. So um, it can be extremely damaging in both, in both uh, psychological and, and physical. Consequences. Where is the line between alcohol addiction and regular enjoyment of alcohol? I suppose in simple terms, Joanna, it's about choice. Uh, that's, that's pretty much uh, in, in, in simple terms. Uh, when, when you have a choice about your drinking, uh, and uh, uh, that makes it an enjoyable experience. When you become dependent, then it turns into something else. What are the, some of the signs or symptoms that I may be addicted to alcohol? Well, there's something uh, about uh, the compulsion and, and cravings. Uh, so, again, you know, uh, if you're having a nice glass of Chardonnay by the river and that's a choice, then that's fine. But when it turns into, when there's a physical craving for it and a dependency and you're managing your emotional landscape with it, then you know that you've got a problem. What should you do if someone you know displays symptoms of alcohol dependency? Well, it's a tough one because it's that, it's that same old thing about, you know, unless you recognize yourself that you've got a problem, it's unlikely that you're going to do anything about it. But, it, you know, I suppose the kind, loving thing to do is just to bring it up and to, uh, and to empathize and to and maybe, um, maybe offer some avenues of support. But, you know, you've got to name it and, and sometimes you've got to challenge it, you know. Why are some people more prone to becoming addicted to alcohol than others? Well, um, that's, you know, it, there's a couple of elements in this. It could be, and if we knew the actual answer, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. Um, but there's elements uh, that are involved that are, that are genetic. I mean, it's likely, it's more likely if, if for instance, your parents were both alcohol, al- alcoholics, it's more likely that you would become alcohol dependent uh, than somebody whose parents weren't. Uh, there's a cultural element to it, and of course there's a there's a physical makeup, uh, and quite often it's just a combination of of that. And the environment that you were brought in up in uh, also, of course, plays a plays a big part in it. What are some of the treatment options that would be available for someone with um, who's addicted to alcohol? Well, um, in terms of treatment, uh, the, the, you know, it ranges from um, a, a full-scale residential treatment experience where, you know, you can get the support of a, of a professional team, um, you know, through to uh, getting hold of your GP, being honest with them, letting them know what's happening. And then there's a local, what they call a, a DAT team, a drug and alcohol team, where you can quite often get uh, free day programs, you can get therapy. Um, th- there is a lot of help out there, and of course, a, you know, a big uh, support system out there, a great support system is Alcoholics Anonymous. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Absolute pleasure.